Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and this is episode 10 of the 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Uh, kind of excited, 10 episodes in 11 weeks, uh, that's something I can be, be happy with, happy, be proud of. Uh, thanks so much for all you that watch, all you that subscribe. Uh, last week I broke that uh, 100 subscriber mark so I can actually give a name to my channel. So uh, it's uh, youtube.com slash c slash 10 minute Amiga Retrocast. And I'll print that down right about there. That's so number one is I'm finally going to be upgrading my warp engine to an 060. Now, a couple of months ago from TB Toro on Amy Bay, I got this absolutely awesome 040 to 060 adapter. This plugs into uh, something like a 3640 card or uh, a warp engine, and it actually takes your 040 and it upgrades it to an 060. Uh, that's great, except after I bought the thing and I went to go install it, I realized that I have the Omega 3000 version of the warp engine, and it has a soldered in socket. So, I can't pop out the 040 and pop in the 060 in place. Now I got some price quotes for people to do some work on that to, to upgrade it. Uh, I am absolutely not afraid of a soldering iron, but when it comes to a, an incredibly rare piece of hardware like the warp engine, I'm going to put it in the hands of somebody who solders for a living. So uh, Paul uh, Renendez uh, on the Commodore Amiga group on Facebook uh, saw me talking about it the other day. He offered me a really nice price to upgrade it and at the same time remove the two slanted SIM chips in the A3000 version of the warp engine and replace them with four vertical uh, SIM chips. So my little warp engine, not only is it going to be an 060 when I'm all done with it, but it's going to also have 128 megabytes of RAM available to it, which is uh, pretty darn sweet. Now, it's going to have to go away for a few weeks. And I'm sad about that. Uh, I'm going to miss my SCSI drives. I'm going to miss my uh, performance of having 64 megs of really fast memory in there. But while it's gone, I'm going to be putting my 060 into my little A3640 card. I've done it before. It works just great. I literally just pop off that chip, pop the new one on. We're golden. Um, so I'm excited about that. And this is going to give me an opportunity to test the new uh, code built into OS 3.1.4 that supports 060 cards out of the box. Now, for decades, when we put an 060 card in there, we have to have a special version of, of exec uh, running that shuts down, I believe it's the, what is it, the FPU, I think it shuts it down during the boot process and then turns it back on because if you don't do that, the thing just gurus. The new version supposedly supports it right out of the box. So thumbs up to that, we're gonna try it out. Now, how I'm gonna do this is take out my warp engine, which, which I'm gonna to do today, and deactivate my beautiful SCSI drives, and I'm gonna put in my 10 gigabyte IDE hard drive. Now, that's like, going from you know driving your Maserati to driving a Volkswagen. So uh, I, hopefully I won't be doing too much swearing working with IDE for a few weeks. But once I get that installed, I'm going to upgrade from OS 3.9 on my IDE drive. That's my, my one of my backup drives I have OS 3.9 on. I'm going to run the in-place upgrade that the, the guys who designed 3.14 and upgrade 3.9 Amiga OS with the 3.1.4 components using the script available on AmyNet. We're going to see how that works out. I think it's going to work fine. But as of this moment in time, it's going to be a system with Amiga OS 3.9 on it, 
which would choke on an 060 processor without special ROMs. I do own the ROMs, I've got them right over here, but I don't want to be swapping my ROMs around. So what I'm going to do, put in my, my 3640 card, she'll be running with 16 megabytes of fast RAM and an 25 megahertz 040 processor. We're going to do the upgrade to Amiga OS 3.1.4 on top of Amiga OS 3.9 and then once it's stable, once I'm sure that works, then I'll pop out this 040 chip and put in my 060 chip and now here is my little pride and joy my 40 megahertz warp engine Again, I think one of the nicest designed Amiga accelerators that I have seen. Uh, this is the A3000 version, so it's designed with a little slimmer form factor than the A4000 version. Okay, so we've got Amiga OS 3.9 running off my IDE hard drive right now. It's already quieter because there's no CPU fan and I've got my Falcon drives off. It is running a little bit slower and I don't have my USB hooked up yet, but it's going to be good enough to upgrade. So let's see how we do this. We're going to go into iBrowse and we're going to download our software. And it's still down here at the bottom, but if you're looking for it and you can't find it in the on the home screen, it's called update to 314.lha. Okay, so we're going to download that. So we're going to download this little guy and we'll put that in my downloads folder. Zippity doo da day, it's already done. Now, this is one of the things that I miss about 3.19. Believe it or not, I really like the little uh, launch bar down here. I actually think it's, it's kind of clever. And I haven't found a good replacement for it yet. So it'll be nice to have this back at least for a while. Now let's go to my work drive and my downloads folder. All kinds of stuff in there. Now update to 314.lha. LHA E. There we go. So it's already extracted that. Now, let's give this little guy a try. Uh, update your system, yes. I hope you're, you're catching all this, reading all this, because you have to type all this in manually. Okay, not really. Okay, that procedure where it, it goes through all of the items on the disk literally took four or five minutes so obviously I edited it out. Now we're at the point where it's asking us to install our floppies. So we'll start with my 3.1.4 install drive or disk. And you can see it's going and copying over the things that it needs to copy over. Modules is the next disk that it asks for. And that's going to be different based on which machine you have. Mine is the A4000 module disk. A lot of you will have the A1200 module disk instead. Now it concerns me here, can't open workbench library output, file is light protected, fast file system, file is right protected. Uh, I'm going to have to consider if there's going to be an issue with those. Okay, next our workbench 3.14. There we are. Now one thing I'm going to be curious about is memory usage because OS 3.9 uh, sucks up a tremendous amount of RAM. I've got 16 megabytes in here and with nothing really tremendous running 
it takes me down to about 7 megabytes with OS 3.9. OS 3.14 does not have that same issue where it automatically sucks away 4 megs of RAM. So I'm curious when this is done if I'm going to be back up to around 10 to 12 megabytes of RAM left. Extras 3.14. Now, I don't think I'll put the glow icons on here. 3.1.4's glow icons. I really kind of like the OS 3.9 icons. They look really nice. So I may just leave that as it is. Now, one thing I'm hoping is that this lets me keep the OS 3.9 HD toolbox because I think it's superior to the 3.1.4 toolbox, just the layout and the use of it. The, the 3.1.4 toolbox is perfectly functional, supports li large drives great, but I like the, the interface of 3.9s a little better. Storage, 3.1.4, okay. You know what? I say I like my 3.9 icons, and I think this is overwriting all my 3.9 icons. I think when I reboot, it's going to look pretty darn generic and not these fancy pants icons that I'm using here. That's okay. Icons can be updated. Now at this point, it's copying over all the new printer drivers, which are vastly superior to 3.9's printer drivers. Fonts disk is next. Oops. Okay, so it's gone and refreshed everything here. Uh, I think maybe what it's doing is setting permissions. I'm not sure. Uh, installation complete. Remove all floppies. Remove all floppies and reboot and enjoy. So this is going to be the big test. So this is our reboot after we installed 3.1.4. Copyright 2018, Hyperion, that looks good. Now look at here, uh, over nine megabytes of memory free, where with 3.9, I was down to about seven to 7.3. So this certainly did free up at least two megabytes of RAM, and it boots about three times quicker. Uh, a couple of little caveats, did replace my icons, but that's no big deal. It did also, put on the 3.1.4 version of HD Toolbox, and it does really make perfect sense because you've got all of your new features uh, that we didn't have before, like uh, you know our long file names, you know, and, and, and so yeah, it, it makes perfect sense why it has to do that. It's just sad because I really like the old version. Um, so that looks really good. Uh, so far, I have not run into any issues. Uh, what I'm gonna do after this is change the, the intuition patch like I did on my other installation uh, where I can drag windows off the screen because it is surprising how helpful that is. Next step, let's put on the 060 processor. So, I had a couple of interesting issues happen when I did the upgrade from 3.9 up to 3.1. Point four. Uh, when I did it with just the 040 card in there, and the 040 chip, it worked fine. Everything came up and uh, it seemed to be functioning okay. Uh, so I put in my 060 chip, the one that I showed a little bit earlier, and it just went into a constant reboot cycle, which is what happens if you don't have the ROMs with a special exec kernel that's designed to handle 060 processors. Um, so, while Amiga OS 3.1.4 seems to support uh, 060 chips out of the box, I am suspecting we probably need the actual 3.1.4 ROMs in there to work. So I had to put my custom ROMs back in, uh, which worked fine. I mean, they're, they're basically 3.1 ROMs with a special exec, allows it to boot, and then once it starts booting, the Amiga OS 3.1.4 does its magic, updates the ROMs again, and we're fine. So that finally came up okay, although I had a little scare with it not booting at all, but 
that was resolved. Uh, the second issue was, uh, after I got into it, um, oh look, it's a little Doug. How about that? Um, after I got into it, um, my USB stopped working. Now, of course, I've got the Rapid Road uh, USB adapter that plugs into my XSurf 100. Just absolutely refused to work, refused to do everything. So I thought, well, did, did I short something out? Did my XSurf die? No, it was okay. The Rapid Road seemed like it was okay. I could do show config and it would show that the, the, the module there. Um, so I got a little, little concerned about that, started doing a little research, and I found a, a different driver on the um, website, the Rapid Road uh, website for individual computers that says it's a special driver in case you have issues with an A3640 card or uh, some type of CyberVision card. Um, but I tried that driver, USB came right back up. Um, it works perfect. All of the Amiga OS 3.1.4 updates went on here. I still have my Amiga OS 3.9 uh, additional software like the dock and, and the, my, my edit pad, which I absolutely loved. Uh, and I was able to load Best Workbench on here, the four disks of Best Workbench I went over the other day loaded fine, haven't really had any issues, any software compatibility issues. So I'm going to say it's been a success. I switched over to my IDE drive, uh, 10 gig. I took out my warp engine so I can send it to Paul for upgrading. Put in my A3640 card, upgraded to an uh, 060 CPU. So now I've got 16 megs of RAM. Uh, and an 060 card in here and it seems to be working okay so I would have to give this a thumbs up on the the script that they used you could run into a couple little issues but they are able to be overcome if you need help overcoming any issues you run with leave a comment in the in the on YouTube here get in touch with me on one of the boards on all the boards you'll find me under dynamic computing um, you'll also find me on Facebook on the, the Commodore Amiga board and the Amiga.org board under Douglas Compton. Um, happy to help out any way that I can. But until next time, this is Doug from 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast and Dynamic Computing, signing out.